Okay, this is lesson eight and nine, the last two lessons in vehicle finance for my grade 12 essential math students. So can everybody turn to the lesson eight, leasing a vehicle page in your notes booklet. Instead of purchasing a vehicle or buying a vehicle outright, you can lease a vehicle. When you lease a vehicle, you pay a set amount each month for a specified number of months to the dealership. You are effectively paying to rent the vehicle for the term of your lease. You don't own it, you're basically just renting it. That's what a lease is. When you lease a vehicle, you will be required to sign a lease agreement. Think of it like a contract. It specifies the initial value of the item, in which case, you know, the vehicle. I don't know why they went with the item here. I guess that's true for leasing anything. The buyout price at the end of the lease. It's what we kind of called like the residual value. Hang on a sec. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so... Remember how when we buy a brand new vehicle, or even a used vehicle, over time it depreciates in value. So the value that it has left after a certain amount of time is what we call the residual value. But with a lease, that can also be the buyout price. You might lease a vehicle for two years or three years and like it so much that you actually want to purchase it. So that would mean that you have a buyout price. Then, uh, very often in a lease, there is a down payment required. We talked yesterday when we were talking about buying vehicles that a lot of car dealerships don't want you to put down a down payment because they want you to have to finance the vehicle as long as possible because they're making money off the interest. But that's not true for a lease. See, for a lease, remember, a brand new car, if they're going to lease it out, you have to pay them for how much it's going to depreciate because they'll they'll get to sell it again in three years but in three years it's worth a lot less than it's worth right now so a down payment can keep your lease payments lower and it's good for them because they get the money up front for the fact that they're going to lose the depreciation value of a brand new vehicle so down payments it says if there is one with leasing there's usually a down payment whereas buying nowadays there usually isn't um any additional fees they just say additional in the notes. There might be some sort of uh, registration fees and stuff when you when you uh, uh, register your, your lease agreement. Uh, it'll also specify the interest rate that you are making on your payments. And it'll actually specify what the monthly payments are and your contract will say exactly how much each monthly payment is, and it'll also say exactly when it's due. Very often, people set up a direct withdrawal from their account for their payments for things like leases for cars. But that's, again, something you'd work out in your contract. Now, the contract will also talk about other restrictions, including reasonable use and care, right? So you're going to be expected to take care of this vehicle. You don't really own it. You are leasing it. And... Uh, how many kilometers you may drive. You might have a restriction on how many kilometers you're allowed to drive a lease vehicle. And if you go over that number, how much does it cost you per kilometer if you exceed that limit? So a lease agreement will talk about you have this many kilometers you can drive it before you, when you turn it into us. If you're over that, you pay us this much for every kilometer you're over. I'm not making this sound like it's a really good idea, am I? Having said that, remember we saw Kevin O'Leary's video, right? He talked about how happy he was to lease a vehicle, and then remember what he even said when he took it back? It's like, hey, we have another vehicle we could lease you, and it's like, nah, I found that one was just sitting in my driveway because I was using ride-sharing and Uber all the time. I was very happy to drive back to the lot, hand him the keys, and walk away. And that's the important part, right? If you buy a brand new vehicle, even if it's brand new, after a few years, what if it starts breaking down, right? 
You're maybe making payments on it for five years. By the end of year three, you might be like, I'm so done with this vehicle, but I'm stuck with it for another two years. That's not true in a lease. In a lease, your lease is up. If that vehicle has any sort of problem at all, or if you're like, I don't really want this vehicle anymore, good, it's gone, it's off your hands. You had to pay to use it, you paid a lease, but you're not stuck with it. So that can be an important thing for a lease. At the end of your lease's term, it's your call. You can either purchase the vehicle or return it and say, thank you very much, I'm out. Okay, some vocabulary that we're gonna see. A lease payment is, of course, the amount paid for a set period. Usually you pay monthly for the duration of the lease to the dealer for the use of the vehicle. The residual value for leases is an estimate of the vehicle's worth at the end of the lease and the dealer determines that at the beginning, it should be in the contract you sign. It's also known as the buyout price. Residual value rate is usually the percentage of original value that the vehicle is worth at the end of the term. All right, what are the advantages? Again, I, I haven't painted maybe a rosy picture of leasing, but some people find it the best way to, to have a daily vehicle to use rather than buying one. The advantages are there is usually a low down payment. There's actually usually, there's almost never no down payment, but it's usually low. Monthly lease payments can be lower than the car loan to buy. This one's really important for some people. I know that my sister-in-law, she leases vehicles because she feels that in her line of work, She's an investment broker. It's her job to try to convince people to invest their money with her. It's just in her best interest as a business person to always show up in a nice new vehicle, right? It makes you look successful. You're driving a brand new vehicle. So she's going to want to trade it in every two years. It's easier to do that with a lease. You lease for two years, you take it back, you get a different one. You're never buying it. You're never stuck having to unload it. So you always have a newer vehicle. It's always under warranty, so you never have to worry about repairs and stuff. And you do not have to deal with selling or trading in the vehicle at the end of the lease. That convenience along with that perception that, hey, I'm successful. Look at what a nice new vehicle I'm always driving. And a couple of years later, you're driving another one. There may be a tax advantage for businesses for leasing vehicles. We were just talking about that at the back of the room there, right? Your family leases their vehicles because it allows them to claim it as a business expense on their taxes. Sometimes you can do that with vehicles you have to buy for your business, but not always. Whereas a leased vehicle, you can pretty much always. If you have a business where running that business relies on you having access to a vehicle, if it's a leased vehicle, it's a business expense when you do your taxes. So that's a huge benefit for small business people. Lease don't buy. Now, what are the disadvantages of leasing? Okay, well, again, you don't actually own it. It's not yours. It's kind of like renting an apartment. But I want to change the paint color. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to put new rims on it and a spoiler. I want to pimp the ride, as they say on MTV in the 19 through the 2000s. You guys remember? Are you old enough to remember that show? Celebrities had their vehicles all tricked out. Oh, it was quite the show. They still do that show? I, I haven't turned on MTV in so long. Anyway, you can't do that to a lease. It's not yours, right? You, you have to take care of it, but you're not allowed to change things about it. You, you don't actually own it. You will always have a monthly payment. I mean, when I buy a vehicle, I'm making big monthly payments, but in five years, they're over, and I own it. I have three vehicles. I'm only making payments on one of them. The other two, I straight up own. With a lease, you always have that payment. You are charged for extra kilometers and any excessive wear and tear in your vehicle. Uh, a good friend of mine, he's, he makes a lot more money than I do. He's a lawyer. His wife's a judge. And uh, when they go on a long trip, they love taking long trips. They actually drove to Mexico one, uh, one winter. Um, they don't use their own lease vehicle. They lease their vehicles but they're not gonna drive their own lease vehicles because they know those big long trips would put them over how many kilometers they're allowed to drive. So they actually go to like uh, Enterprise and rent a vehicle and pay the insurance on it and then 
drive it to wherever. That way, too, when they stop in bigger cities down south where, you know, crime rates can be high and stuff, apparently San Francisco is, it's almost a guarantee if you park downtown in San Francisco, you would be broken into. It's that bad, apparently. Uh, but if it's a rental vehicle, who cares? <laughs> it's not your problem. So, yeah, you got to worry about that. Extra kilometers and extra wear and tear you might have to pay for. Question? That's what you pay insurance for. Right? Insurance covers a leased vehicle or a rental vehicle. The same. Oh, I should have said the question in the microphone. The question was, what if you get into an accident with a leased vehicle? You don't own it. Auto pack still works the same. You still pay for your insurance as if you owned it. So it works exactly the same as you did for a, a bought vehicle. So you're not saving any money on insurance. You have to pay for the insurance the same as you would as if you had bought the vehicle. Good question. All right, uh, you may have to pay a penalty if you decide to end the lease early. It's like, oh, I got to get out of this lease because I just got a new job in a new city and I don't want to take this vehicle with me. Well, there'll be a penalty for that because you signed a contract saying you were going to pay for this for two years or three years. So there'll be a penalty for that. The vehicle can be more expensive if you choose to buy it outright at the end of the lease term. We'll look at that mathematically in a minute. Okay, so there's the advantages and disadvantages. Let's do some mathy stuff now. Example one, the cost of an SUV is $34,000 plus taxes. We've got the freight included and all the options and the air conditioning taxes all in that number. The monthly lease payment is $349 plus tax for 36 months. For leasing, they wanted a down payment of $3,850. Also, just like renting an apartment, they want a security deposit of $500, which you'll get back if you return the vehicle in decent shape. Also, you have to have your first month's payment ready when you sign the lease. It says the residual value is 75% after three years. All right, let's do the math. First of all, the total monthly payment is going to be 349 And then it says calculate GSD and PSD and then add. Okay, you know I don't really play the game that way. Unless they actually ask me specifically what the tax numbers are, it's so much easier to just times by 1.12, right? Remember how that works? The 12 percent is the 5 percent GST and the 7 percent GST added together. And I've done that button punch already. Let's make sure I don't goof this up today. 390.88. If somebody's got their calculator handy, can you run that and make sure I'm getting the same numbers as you? Thank you very much. So there's, there's the payment with tax. Notice that's not a lot. We've seen in the last lesson, we saw much higher monthly car payments when you're buying than that. Lease payments can be lower. Depends on the vehicle, depends on the lease. Okay. Have I got the right number? Okay, thank you. Now, what's the total lease payment? Well, my total lease payment is my down payment, which they said was 3,850, plus the total payments. Okay, so each payment was $390.88. Look back at the question. How long am I leasing for? Three years, 36 months. So I'm making that payment 36 times. If I do that calculation, According to my button punching, that should be $17,921.68. Okay. All right, sees a different question. How much do you have to pay at the start of the lease? Well, at the start of the lease, you needed your down payment, 3850 Oh, yeah, there was a security deposit of $500. And you had to do one month's payment, which we calculated back in A, to be 390.88. So if I really need to do this lease right away, I better have $4,740.88 in my bank account. That's one advantage of, of buying. Most of the time when you buy a vehicle, they'll, they'd rather finance than take your down payment. You could walk in with no money in the bank, and as long as you have good credit, they check to make sure you have a job and you're going to get paid, that's fine. You can drive out with a car. Lease, not so much. 
They need money up front. All right, so that's the C question. Number two. This one's a little more complicated. In example one that we just did, the residual value is 75% after three years. So calculate the residual value of the vehicle after three years, including taxes. Okay, now when it says including taxes, they mean put the taxes on after you find the residual value. So take the original value of the car, which was $34,000. I'm sorry, it was an SUV, I think. Take the original value of the SUV, times it by the rate, which is 75%. And then this time it actually wants the, the taxes separately. So I'll first of all I'll get this number. So this is $25,500. Now it wants the taxes, GST and PST, so fine. I'll take $25,500 times it by 12%. So there is the taxes, $3,060. And then the residual value plus tax are just these two numbers added together. So 25.5 add 3060. So if I wanted to buy the vehicle at the end of this loan, what was the name of the person again? Oh, it didn't have a person on it this time. So the, in example one, if at the end of the, the lease term, in example one, if I wanted to buy this vehicle, I have to pay that much. Residual value plus taxes. Now, can I point out to you, can we just think about this for a sec? Let me, let me back up for a second. Residual value, again, kind of reminds me of depreciation. Now, do you guys remember the numbers? I'll give you a sec to flip back in your notes if you want. What do most vehicles depreciate in the first year? Do you remember what it was? That's usually what it is in the second year. It's usually 20 in the first year and then 15 every year after that. So if I'd have taken the 34,000, you'd have to write this down. I'm just comparing. If I'd have taken the 34,000 and I'd have lost 20% in the first year and then 15% in the second year and 15% in the third year, I ran that calculation and I actually got 19,652. So if I'd have bought this vehicle from them instead of leased it, in three years when I'm looking to sell it, this is all I'm gonna get for it. But if I leased it from them for three years and decided, okay, I wanna buy it now, apparently this is how much it is. So if anybody ever tells you, you know, I like leasing my vehicles and then at the end I could buy and it's usually you save money that way, that's almost never true. Usually, a buyout price at the end of a lease is usually more than the vehicle is worth due to depreciation, and it's costing you money. That doesn't mean there aren't some advantages to it. Again, for the first three years, your payments were lower. But if your plan long-term is to own the vehicle, don't lease. As you can see, look at the difference. Quite a bit. A $9,000 difference. Okay, example three. For the vehicle in example one, at the end of the three-year lease, you have the option of returning the vehicle or purchasing it for this value we calculated above. So what would be the total price I'd have to pay? Okay, here's where you're going to have to pay real close attention, guys. The notes are wrong. The total purchase price of the vehicle is the total payments you made plus this residual value that we just did. And what is missing here? Ask yourself, what else did we pay? I think I heard somebody say it. What else was there at the beginning of this problem? So here, let's, let's start running the numbers. The total payments, including taxes, where was that? Where was our total payments? There they were. Total payments were 19, were basically this number times this number. But don't forget, there was a down payment here. So the total lease payment has to include the down payment. And I don't think, does it say that? Total lease payment, it says, it says total lease payments. I'm gonna just add in here, include your down payments. So depending on the kind of question you're doing, 
it might ask you just how much were all the payments, in which case you don't include the down payment. But if it says how much did it cost me to lease this vehicle, then you include the down payments. So remember that this number back in example one here, again, I'll go back to it. This number in example one included the down payment. So make sure that when you're looking at this formula, I honestly think it should say that here. I think that formula is kind of wrong. Make sure you're using this number, $17,921.68, and then plus my residual value, which I just figured out up here, $28,560. And then when I add those two things up, this one I actually didn't actually do. Oops, come back. So I'll punch buttons for this one. So it's $17,921.68 plus $28,560, $28,560, I should say. And I get $46,481.68. And there we go. And that's quite a bit. Again, the original vehicle was only worth, go back to by getting a sample of one, that was only for a $34,000 vehicle. So yeah, leasing and then buying it is usually the most expensive way to buy a car. But some people prefer it because for the first three years, their payments are lower, and if they weren't sure they were going to buy the car, they weren't committed to it. At the end of the lease, they could have just driven it back to the lot, handed them the keys, and waved bye bye It's not their problem anymore. Okay. Let's roll on. Let's, the next lesson just does some comparing. If we're comparing buying to leasing, how about repair costs? For a lease, new vehicles are usually covered by a warranty. If at the end of the lease, the car did not have a good repair history, there was lots of problems. Now, granted, those problems didn't cost you anything, but it was the inconvenience. It had to take it in, get things fixed. You know, I need this vehicle to get to work every day, and it spent three weeks in the shop. Eh, that's an inconvenience. But remember that if you decide you want to buy that at the end of the warranty, then the, or at the end of the lease, then when the warranty runs out, any repairs are your problem. So if it was a vehicle that had problems that needed fixing, at the end of the lease, I probably wouldn't even think about buying it out. I'd say, no thanks, here's your car back. I'll go lease something else now. Now, when you purchase a new vehicle, repairs will be covered by the warranty for a similar period of time. However, when the warranty expires, you have to pay for any repair bills unless you decide to try to trade the vehicle in or sell it yourself. All right. How much do you drive the vehicle? If it's a lease, we mentioned this a few minutes ago, if you drive the vehicle more than the specified number of kilometers in your lease agreement, you will owe them some money at the end of the lease. You need to know that your driving habits, uh, you need to know your driving habits well and negotiate an appropriate price and kilometer allowance that suits your habits. If you're leasing a vehicle because you're a salesperson and you drive all across Western Canada, you better make sure that you've negotiated for a high number of kilometers. If you're leasing a vehicle and you only drive it commuting to and from work and you live fairly close to where you work, then kilometers probably aren't going to be your problem. So the number of kilometers you drive, if you purchase a vehicle, the number of kilometers you drive does not affect your, um, your monthly payment at all. Your vehicle wears out more quickly the more you dry it and affects your resale value down the road. Right? If you're looking for a used vehicle, one of the first things you check is, well, how many kilometers are on it? And if it's really high, you'd go, ooh, this thing's been driven a lot. So that might mean I might think about trying to find one that has lower kilometers. Okay, how do the payments compare between leasing and buying? Well, lease can be more attractive because the payments per month are usually less. However, if you consider the total amount you'd pay for the vehicle, including the residual buyout amount, at the end, you'd pay more. So if you're planning to lease, just to lease. At the end of the lease, you plan to give it back. Yep, you're probably going to save money and get to buy a brand new and get to drive around in a brand new vehicle. But if your plan is to eventually buy it and own it, mm, you were better off purchasing from the start. 
If you continually return leased vehicles and get new leases, you'll never own a new vehicle and you'll make payments for as long as you lease. Some people are fine with that. For purchasing, once the car is paid off, you no longer need to make monthly payments. You just have to fix whatever goes wrong with it now that you own it. And again, what type of vehicle you, you get sometimes has an effect on that, right? You, some brands of vehicles are just notorious for needing lots of repairs. Some vehicles have great reputations and they just, you know, they're not prone to breaking down very often. All right, the other thing to consider, how often do you like to change vehicles? Like I told you, when it comes to my sister-in-law, it's all about showing up in her shiny new business suit, in her shiny new Cadillac car, looking very, very successful. Please invest your money with me now. If she showed up in a 10-year-old beater in her sweatpants, I don't think anybody's signing over their life savings to her hedge fund or whatever the heck she runs. I, I'm not a finance guy. I don't, I, don't know what, I don't know how that stuff works. You give me too much money, I'm just going to waste it on comic books. So this is a person who wants a new vehicle every two or three years. She honestly thinks it would harm her business if she was driving a vehicle that was more than two years old. So every two years, she takes in her lease, gets something else. Almost always a Cadillac. Went with a Lincoln once. Something about Cadillacs when it comes to salespeople. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Yep. Oh, they're nice. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've, I, I've, I've taken it for a spin a couple of times. They're pretty nice. My dad too used to be a big Cadillac fan. When, when my, when I was little, my dad had a 1968 Cadillac, and when I was five years old, to me, I thought it was the Batmobile, because it was long and black. It had big fins on the back, because the 60s they still had fins on the back of vehicles. I kept kind of bugging him. Can we put like the the, the rocket thing at the back that shoots out flames? And he. Like, no, that's not a real thing. Anyway, now if you're a person who wants to try to buy a new vehicle every few years, like it's like, yeah, I, I, I want to change vehicles every two or three years too, but I don't like leasing. I want to own it. You're going to spend more money. If you want to buy a vehicle every few years, you're going to pay more. Usually, purchasing is best if you want your vehicle for a longer period of time, all right? And you have visions down the road of not having that monthly car payment anymore because you own it now. But, sure, okay, actually, let me just stop my video because that's the end of the lesson. You can get started right now. If you're not, if you're already done the 3E worksheet from yesterday, there's one more worksheet in the workbook, 3F. You can get started on that. I'm gonna stop the video here.